In this episode, we're going to unbox a new stereo preamp from Arlick. This one is a Bluetooth-capable preamp with a phono input that will accept moving magnet and moving coil cartridges and allow you to stream it to wireless headphones or to your sound system, including Bluetooth input and a Bluetooth transmitter. Let's check it out. Today I have another mystery package to unwrap, so let's get started. So I have the new BP50 wireless stereo preamp with audio transmitter from Arlick. Let's take a look at the specifications. So it's a Bluetooth wireless stereo preamplifier with the ability to transmit your music wirelessly to Bluetooth headphones. The BP50 has both analog and digital outputs for use with your amplifier or active speakers and it comes with different types of analog and digital inputs including photo input for use with turntable, TV audio return channel for use with TV, and you can play your music or file stored on a USB stick or directly connected to a PC. All the input sounds can be output to the connected amplifier or stream wirelessly to Bluetooth earphones or earbuds. You can control the BP50 with the remote controller or our free mobile application for both Android and iOS systems unless you have full control. That's in a nutshell the specifications and here's the inputs from the back. Now I've used Arlix products for years. In fact when you hear the radio playing in the background that's actually an Arlick amplifier board that I put inside a pair of speakers on the other side of the shop. I stream radio through these devices throughout the house all the time and they run flawless. Can play any format. Uses the Bluetooth 5.2 standard. It has two Bluetooth transmits so you can connect to two Bluetooth uh, speakers or earbuds and it has two Bluetooth receivers so you can connect two Bluetooth, Bluetooth transmitter devices. Supports APTX, HD, APTX, LL, APTX, HAD, AAC, and SBC protocols for Bluetooth. For the audio, it supports analog RCA with a maximum of 2 volt input. For phono input, analog support for moving magnet and moving coil which is important. You can use this as a preamp for a turntable. You can put on a USB disk drive playback, supports resume playback, sample rate 48, kilo, or 48 kilohertz. Storage format, FAT16, FAT33, EX FAT up to 128 gigabytes. You can put a 128 gig memory stick into here. Supports MP3, MP4, WMA, MOV, M4A, AAC, FLAC, and APE from 96 kilohertz to 24 bit. Type-C USB DAC for PC connection, sample rate 48 kilohertz. Subwoofer out, it's got a subwoofer output, crossover frequency 250 hertz, line out, maximum 2 volt RMS, optical out 48 kilohertz, coax out 48 kilohertz, 16 bit. That's what the specs are, and the app lets you control all of this. Let's take a look at the unit itself. But uh, here's what's in the box. The important unboxing. You know, it's actually quite large for a change. Most of these are relatively small, but this is a nice size unit that would go nicely in anyone's stereo system. And inside the box here, a couple of antennas, a remote control, and a power adapter. Let's put the antennas on. This unit differs from other products that I've got from Arlick in the fact that this one actually does not have Wi-Fi or network connectivity. So this one does not stream internet radio or any streaming services on here. They have other products for that. This one here is a preamp. Designed as a preamp so you can combine all of your up or all of your analog and digital sources, I should say, uh, including your turntable and either output them to your amplifier through the line out or send them directly to Bluetooth headphones. That's what is this, this one is designed for. You can connect your smartphone, you can connect two smartphones, play music from your smartphone through your sound system using the line out connected to your sound system so it prevents you having to 
plug your phone in directly and as you know most phones these days don't have an aux out on them anyway so this gives you a line out from your phone as long as it's connected by Bluetooth to this preamp. It also gives you the ability to connect it to the audio return channel from your ARC enabled HDMI on your television so that the sound from your television can be output either by coaxial, optical or the left and right analog outputs. It has a line input, a subwoofer out, an optical input and phono input and that is what this one does. So typically you could loop this through a tape loop on your amplifier for example. That way you could have your signal speeding through here and back into your power amplifier or use this with a power amplifier and I might just do that. I might just connect this with a power amplifier inside and use this as a preamp because that's what it's designed for. It, this is a preamp. We're going to hook it up here to my sound system and I'm going to get a pair of Bluetooth uh, headphones so I can pair them and try it out and uh, also we'll play around with the, the playback from a USB stick. On the front you've got a volume button, a power switch, a volume button and you click it to go through the modes and there'll be a, I guess a sort of display on here. Probably just some lights. Uh, anyway, let's power this up and just see exactly what it does and how it works. This connector mark DAC is a DAC input digital to audio converter. This is to connect to your computer so you can take advantage of much better sound quality from the DAC here than most computers have in the sound card. So it allows you to use this as an external sound card to your computer. Feed it to your stereo system or digital output. Comes with a basic remote control that you can control all the basic features including the preset tone control Base, separate bass and treble, select your PC input, USB input, Bluetooth receive, ARC, which is for your TV sound, optical in, line in, phono in. And these ones would be to control volume up and down and changing the track and play and pause for using it with a USB source. It takes a couple of, I'm going to say AAA batteries, and they are not included. So I've got a couple of AAA batteries here. We'll load this up and get the unit connected. When I first turn the device on, it's starting to flash BT, and I'm just going to look for one called uh, BP, I think it's BP50. Okay, let's connect to BP50, and it says pairing. I'm going to pair this to my phone. It says uh, pairing request, yes. So now the Bluetooth light is now solid. So now anything I play through my phone should come through here and through the, the amplifier which is connected to. So let's just try playing something. Uh, if I can remember how to play music on my phone because I haven't played music on my phone in years. I'm not someone who plays music from my phone. I don't use it to play music. Let's try uh, this one and see whether this will play. Play. Okay, it's playing. And there it is. So that plays. If I adjust the volume on here, you can see it's actually adjusting the volume from the phone. If I press in, it stops the phone from playing. Oh, that switches inputs, that's why. <laughs> okay, back to Bluetooth. That reconnects. I forget how to do this thing. You see, I got, I got a bunch of tracks on here, but uh, oh, never played. Yeah, and you think? Because I never play anything on here. Better not play that. So that's basically how you can. Now, will this change the track on my phone? I wonder if I use the remote. It does. Cool. So you, you could take an old, if you want to play music on a phone, you could have your phone just sitting next to this or anywhere within range and use the remote control and it will change tracks.
So that's uh, the Bluetooth capability. So let's just disconnect the Bluetooth now because uh, we're going to try some of the other features. Oh, as crazy as it sounds, I don't, as I said before, I don't use my phone for music playback. I just don't because I don't want my battery going dead. I like my battery lasting all day. And as it is, I use it enough for things like email and so forth. So I don't need to burn up more time playing the radio or playing music through my phone. Uh, when I get in the car, my car actually has uh, a player built in and I can just plug a USB stick in. In the case of this one, this one even says cartoons on it because it was from my old car. My new car has an SD card in it, so I've got all my music on an SD card. And I get in the car and music plays. I don't have to worry about anything else. And my phone connects by Bluetooth, so phone calls can come in. and. Uh, and the like so that's why I don't use my phone for listening to music and I don't have much on the memory card on here because I use the memory space more for storing photos and stuff let's plug in the USB with some music on it, it tells me it's connected by USB now as soon as I plugged in USB this USB stick uh, play has both photos and music in it it won't play if there's anything other than music on it I just grabbed another USB stick yeah isn't this a cool USB stick in fact it's not really a USB stick it's actually an SD card that fits into a USB stick kind of neat little adapter um, makes it look like a USB stick that you can change memory on we'll plug this one in I just put, I just put some I dumped some files onto this one and we'll see whether it will play there we go Track skip. What's going to play next? These are the two tracks and the root. Okay, now it's going on to the next one. So it is playing subfolders. So I guess the, the, the problem must have been that because I had a folder with a whole bunch of JPEG pictures on the other memory stick. That might be why it was getting confused as it was seeing not just music. So after all the instructions do say if you have many music files and you want to play them, store them on a USB disk drive and play back. Just plug it in and your music files will play. You know, I've only had this music collection for like 20 years, and there's still stuff I haven't heard of it. This is Music Bakery that's playing. wondering that's the uh, the track it's nice that they finally got their music catalog put into Shazam and stuff because this stops all of the BS copyright claims from third parties making claim that royalty free content that is being used by people like myself is somebody else's property which is not it's nice to have it done but uh, half the time the dates are incorrect like released 2011 now this was released a lot before 2011 I had it a lot earlier than that but uh, anyway it sounds like it only plays in the order that the tracks are loaded onto the USB stick, which is like some of the others. And when you skip forward and backwards, it plays them all in sequence. I don't see a random button on here, which would be really nice if it had it. We can also do have different uh, settings for EQ, so for example, press the 
jazz button and it'll change the EQ slightly and same with the rock. Bass and treble. You gotta click it one time for each. You can't hold it, you see. I was holding it down, but you gotta click it. Flat takes it back to natural sound. It has a mute button to mute. You can press and hold the volume buttons, but the bass and treble, you gotta press it one at a time. And you can tell because it's the, it's the USB light only flashed once when I press the button, it doesn't. Right? Same with that, right? Press the button down. It only blinks once. Every time you press it, if you hold it, nothing happens. But when you press and hold the volume, right? So the, the indicator light will flash when it's receiving a signal. Okay, so that's the basic function of the USB player that's built in. The app I'm looking for is called Go, Go Control. It shows you the little icon there. That's the one I want. So I'm going to install that one. Of course, I had to give it permission to my device's location or it would not let me select the device. Getting a little bit too invasive for my likings. Now I can select the inputs on here. Line input, phono, optical, USB. There we go. Now I can control it here. What happens if I hit this? Do I have... Uh, oh, here I can select... So you need the app if you want to select moving magnet or moving coil for the phono, arc input, volume, steps. See now I really messed it up. Dark or light? You can make the colors on your phone screen any color you want. way too much fun with this uh, controller as you can see oh that looks terrible secondary color I'm well, just uh... or right, we can take it back to the default color there we go Basically, you can do the same thing you can do from the uh, remote control, but you can do it from your phone. You can also select the uh, crossover frequency for subwoofer if you've got a subwoofer. And you'll hear that it actually pulls the bass out of the main audio. You listen. So if you're running a subwoofer, you can control that directly through here from the app itself. Balance, right channel, left channel, right in the middle. Bass, mid, range, and treble. Okay, a little more control over here, over here. Equalization. On the yes, an equalizer as well, so I can set it to the different settings. And then I can also do a, a, a class, a, a custom EQ. Custom, I'm going to add a custom. We'll call it my custom. My EQ. 
and then I can go to my EQ, and now I can control. Equalizer, 125, 250, 500, 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 4, 8, and 16 kilohertz. I think that pretty much covers the basics of the app. I'm going to pair it now to a pair of Bluetooth headphones. And we'll follow the directions on this. This is pretty simple to do it. Actually, you can do it from the remote. You can do it from the box itself. There are, there are different ways to do it. You can do it through the app as well. I'm going to do it without the app. I'm, I don't like using apps for things, right? If you don't have to. Um, I know some people love their apps and they love to use their phone for everything, but if I can do something without using an app, then I'm going to do it without using the app. I mean, it comes with a little card here. The card tells you how to do it with, uh, with the app, and you can also do it from here. So this card gives you the basics. So by remote control, we're gonna select the input, which I'm on USB. I'm gonna push the TX pair button, and I'm gonna select pairing mode on my device. Or you can do it without the remote by selecting your device, and tapping the reset button on the back. The little button on the back that says reset. You can tap that and that will pair it without using the remote. But I'm going to do it just for simplicity using the remote. So I'm going to turn it on and hit Bluetooth uh, TX pair. And now the Bluetooth light is blinking on the front as you can see. And I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth headphones and put them into pairing mode. I can remember how to do this. There we go, hold the button down, and it should pair. And that's it, and that's it, it's connected. Wow, that's it. Now you heard the sound switched from the system here to my headphones. And it sounds excellent. These headphones I have here are um, auto noise canceling headphones, so I can't hear a word. Uh, now I can hear something, but I put this into noise canceling. I can't even hear my own voice, or very faintly. I can't hear myself banging on the counter. Now I can. Noise canceling headphones. They're they're pretty wild. You guys couldn't hear a thing, but uh, trust me, the sound quality was fantastic. With the through these headphones off of this little playback unit. I guess to get back to um, to the audio on here, I just have to turn off the Bluetooth device. So if I press and hold the power button, it should go back to what you did. It's pretty neat. Um, it's, it's it's their standard Bluetooth range, right? So I was able to walk out front and across the street and it cut out which is about the range of Bluetooth they're range rated at 33 feet and I got probably I probably got pretty close to 33 35 feet I was able to walk out I mean my my front of my garage is 25 feet from the street that's the setback so I'm 25 feet from the street and I have another 10 feet from the garage door to where this is sitting and then, so that's be 35 feet and I made it across the street. So probably closer to 40 feet, I'm gonna say. I was away. And uh, then it cut out. It just started getting choppy and cut out, which is what it's expected out of Bluetooth because it's a short range device, right? What it does, what it says, and the sound quality stream over Bluetooth was fantastic. So now I'm going to uh, try it as a, a phono preamp. So I'm gonna plug my turntable in. We'll switch it to phono input. Phono, there we go. And um, we'll see how this performs as a phono preamp. Nice worn record. Of course, it also gives you the ability to play your records 
through your Bluetooth headset, which is always a nice way to be able to listen to music. The only thing I haven't plugged into this yet is an auxiliary input. So we'll just put a line in and it'll just pass through. Whatever is going into the line input. Okay, but the only thing I have left to do on this now is to uh, take it apart and show you guys what's how, what's in it. So let's uh, pull the back off it and take a look at the construction quality of this fine piece of audio equipment. The unit's got Torx screws that hold it shut. That speaks quality right there. And there's the internal workings. So here are the Bluetooth chips. You can see that they've even glued down the antenna connections. Hopefully it's not that crappy yellow Sony bond from 40 years ago that will in 40 years turn to corrosion and turn black and brown and, and uh, corrode the board. I guess time will tell. They've glued the connectors in for the power switch and the front panel as well. And there's the front panel at the front here, which has just got the indicator lights on it. Looks like there's room for more indicator lights that this unit doesn't have. As you can see where the LEDs are on this one. There's a little power switch on the front. With separate wires going down to a separate plug again. Heat shrink tubing around the low voltage wires. Not necessary, but it's done. got a couple of our favorite surface mounted electrolytic caps. I'm not too worried about them failing on this because that problem has been long solved. That was a problem of the 1980s and 90s which was solved years and years ago. So I'm not too worried about that. It's a single sided board. Here's our component. See build quality looks to be pretty good. Oh they've done a little they've done a little mod here. They put a little zero ohm resistor. Looks like that was an afterthought. Maybe somebody oopsed at the factory and they realized that and they just put a little zero ohm jumper across there. But uh, other than that, construction wise, it looks to be pretty good. So that's it for this quick look. I know the look probably took a, uh, the, the quick look probably took a little longer than it should have, but I think that uh, if we go through thoroughly, then we get to see what's in the unit itself, and uh, you can decide for yourself whether the construction quality looks to be good. Looks to be good from my vantage point here. I don't see any faults with the construction of this. It certainly does sound good. I know YouTube probably doesn't do it justice. But uh, to my ears, it sounds pretty darn good here. And through the headphones, it certainly sounded fantastic through the Bluetooth headphones. I'm going to close it up now and put this one back together and uh, enjoy this one in my sound system. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one, and I'll put a link in the description to the Arlick BP50 wireless stereo preamplifier with Bluetooth audio transmitter.